Hello and welcome to what I hope is a quick guide on how to set up your new controller. It should look something like this once you have it all set up. It is fully color customizable with sliders so it's super easy to recolor it to your liking. So starting from the beginning you will need Nyaripad VTS. It's downloadable on itch.io. It is a name your own price download, which means that if you're on a budget, it's totally possible to pick this up for free. Although you should aim to support the developer when you can, if you can. Once you download and extract Nyarapad VTS, it will look something like this. And if you want to run it, you just go ahead and double click the executable file. Now, once you have Nyarupad open, you might not immediately see this menu, and that's because you're probably not connected to VTube Studio. So make sure that you have your VTube Studio open, double click, click on the cog menu, make sure that you are in the cog sub menu and if you scroll down you will find the section that says a vtube studio start api and this needs to be toggled on and if it is toggled on with the port set to 8001 you should receive an automatic request from nearpad to have api access and you'll just want to hit the allow button and it will start transferring data once it's opened it'll look like this and you can hit tab to view all of the buttons if you go ahead and and connect your controller at this point in time you should be able to view your button inputs if your inputs are not working at this point in time i would contact the developer to see if there's anything that you can do about it but otherwise if your inputs are not working you cannot use this plugin with vtube studio it will not track your controller if it's not picking up here once you go ahead and download the controller from my copy page you'll get a zip file which you can go ahead and extract and when you extract it, you should be able to open it up. And we have all of our model information here. In order to add this model into VTube Studio, we're just going to drag the entire folder. We're going to pop it into our Live 2D Models folder. I'm not going to put mine in here because I already have mine in there, but that's what you would do. In case you forgot, this is located within her main drive, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, VTube Studio, VTube Studio, Data, Streaming Assets. <laughs> You should be able to load the model in. It's this one with this icon here. And once you have it loaded in, it should look something like this. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started with editing our controller now. One of the first things that I want to talk about is movement. So within this menu here, the little guy with the cog, if you scroll down, you have movement config here. These are by default set to zero, just because in the case that you don't want movement to be tracked, you don't have to deal with that. But if you toggle this up, for example, when I move my body, it will physically float along with me. So this will track with backward and forward body movement, right and left body movement, and then up and down body movement as well. If you want something more than that, there is an option for it in the expression editor. I'll go over the rest of these expressions in just a moment, but you do have the option to toggle on head tracking for X, Y, and Z. So instead of just your body, you can actually have it move with your head movement as well. So let's go ahead and go over everything else that's in this expression editor real fast. So first of all, naming conventions for controllers are always different. So I do have a controller label guide. This is the labeling convention that I use to label all of the items listed down here. This is just for your reference for while you're editing. So you can toggle it on for the editing process and then go ahead and toggle it off when you're done. In addition to that, all of the color adjustments that are available are all HSL, which means hue, saturation, lightness, and if you don't know what that means, you can go ahead and toggle this on and take a look-see. So hue is the color, saturation is the amount of color, and lightness is whether it's light or dark. This follows the same orientation as the sliders down here, so red is going to be on the left and then it'll go yellow, orange, whatever, to the right. Same thing with saturation, right is going to be the highest saturation and left is the lowest, and darkness, left will be the darkest and right will be the most bright. We have outline opacity. This will toggle the outline on or off. If I press buttons, you can still see them pop up on the screen, but you don't necessarily have to have the outline there to be able to do that. I'm just going to leave that on. It's on by default. I'll come back and show you button glow in just a moment. Max press opacity is exactly what it sounds like. It's the maximum amount of opacity that will occur during a button press. So it's default to 75, but you can make it completely opaque if you want, or you can turn it down to be a little bit more see-through. Up next are the two overhaul buttons. These are intended to be used to change the buttons all at once or to change your outlines all at once. And they 
technically shouldn't be used with the individual buttons, so I'll show you how these work. So if you want to overhaul all of the buttons, for example, right now the buttons are set to black. If I hit this overhaul button color, toggle it on. Now I can turn on the hue, saturation, and lightness, and I can go ahead and bring these up a little bit, change the saturation to be brighter, and I can shift the hue. So I can set this to whatever I want, and this will affect every single button. You can do the same thing with the outline. Overhaul outline color turned on, and then we can go ahead and make some adjustments here. So now we have this Spider-Man <laughs> color scheme. You can do whatever you want, but this is basically, if you want two colors, this is how it works. Now back to button glow real fast. Let me just show you what this means. This basically turns the layers into additive layers. So they will kind of be this see-through neon light effect. And same thing goes for button glow. So this basically just turns on an additive layer and you can do in between too if you only want a little bit of glowing. Just note that within OBS you actually have to be using something like Spout 2 with a pre-multiplied alpha in order for this to show up. If you don't set it to pre-multiplied alpha, this will not be visible. Okay, so now if you want complete button customization, you can do that too. So let's go ahead and pull up one button. These are all labeled, so you should be able to go one button at a time pretty easy. So for example, if I want left trigger, I can just go ahead and type in LT and I will get all of my LTs. So whenever you search up a button, the bottom one is always going to be the press. This is the actual tracking parameter that's used by NyaruPad. So do not leave this turned on, otherwise it will mess up your tracking. But if you don't want to have to hold the button down while you're adjusting the color, you're welcome to turn this on just so you can save your hands <laughs> from pain. <laughs> so then we can go ahead and toggle all of these on and we can make some adjustments. I would recommend bringing the lightness up first so that you can see what's going on. Otherwise, it will be very hard to see. And then I like to do saturation and then I go to my hue. So you can do any option that you want, any combo, and then you can adjust the opacity with the sliders that I showed you before, and you can add on glow if you so desire. You can go through and do this for every single button, and you will end up with something like this watermelon preset that I created. You're welcome to use this and adjust it to your liking. What is my hand doing? One thing that I will say is I mentioned prior that the overhaul button should not be used on top of like the individual button recolors. But technically with this watermelon color scheme, if you want a two way color and you don't want to have to go through and change everything, you can go ahead and go into the overhauls. And if you bump up the saturation and change the lightness a little bit, you can swap the hue around and just get something slightly different. I will be showing you another way that you can adjust this but this is the easiest way if you want a two-tone like this. And again, you can do the same thing with the button overhaul as well. Just make sure the saturation is bumped up, lightness is bumped up a little bit, and then you can go ahead and change the hue. So really quick, I will show you that other way that you can change this super fast. You can find this watermelon preset, and if you open it up, it's actually just a text file. And you can see it's converted all of those parameters into this text file. Now, if you recall, all of the saturations were set to 100 and all of the lightness was set to 65. So if you really want to change this to a different color, you can edit this text file. But just know you should make a copy of it before you do that. So we are going to need a reference uh, for the numbers that we're going to be switching in our watermelon color scheme to make it a new color that we want. So I'm going to pull up the old watermelon color scheme so we can take a look at it. And let's just pull up LT for reference. I'm gonna turn this on temporarily. Right now it's pink and green and let's go for something like, let's do portal colors. So I know I'm gonna bump this down, let's say 40 for both of these. We're going to swap anywhere that the lightness was 65, it's going to be 40. Anywhere that our first color, so 320, was, we're going to swap to 200. And anywhere where our second color was uh, 150, we're going to swap it to 22. We can open this up in Notepad, Replace, 
And then we can type in 320, and we're going to replace that with the number that we chose, which was 200. That's our first number. Replace with 200. And then we're going to hit replace all. And it will update all of those 320.0s to 200.0s. Now we're going to do the same thing with 65. We're swapping that to 40. Replace all. Uh, 150. We're changing to, sorry, 22. Replace all. And now we have our new adjusted watermelon file. And we're going to rename this watermelon file portal. And then don't forget to put this into your model folder. There is my model folder. I'm taking portal and I'm going to pop it into my flux vector controller folder. When we open back our expressions list, we'll see that we have this new portal option. And if we click this, it has conveniently recolored everything for us in a pretty easy way. So that's probably the fastest way that you can recolor a dual... <laughs> So if you want this alternating kind of thing, you can just go ahead and do that. That's the easiest way to recolor it if you don't feel like doing it manually. If you want something more complicated than this, I am not giving you a template for that, Bestie. You can do that yourself. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a hotkey and I'm going to set this to 2 so that I can swap between 1, which is watermelon, and 2, which is portal. But before we move on, there is one last thing you need to do. You need to take the finished edited model that you have created and adjusted and you're going to drag this into your items folder okay so now we can finally put our controller on our model so to do that we go into the items menu search up controller which we put in our folder and double click it and hit ok and it should pull up the controller if you have narrow pad open it should be able to track all of your inputs already and all of our hotkeys that we set up before should work, so if I hit 1, it goes and adds my little watermelon recolor, and if I hit 2, it does our portal recolor. There is one last thing that I need to show you, and that is what I had mentioned prior about the alpha channel, so I'm going to explain what I meant by that real fast. So, as you can see, or can't see, uh, this is completely opaque on top of my background, okay? And um, this is done with a regular Spout 2 capture. So to do a regular Spot 2 capture, first of all, you have to have Spot 2 installed. If you need a tutorial, there's one on my channel for that. We're going to right click, add, we're going to add a Spot 2 capture, and we're going to name this conch, <laughs> and we're going to set it to first available sender, and in composite mode, instead of opaque, you're going to do the pre-multiplied alpha, which will still keep it transparent, but then will also support the additive layer. You can turn on button glow and outline glow. And they look the same against a black background, but on top of the SpaghettiOs, you can see now they are like lit up. If you do not set this to a pre-multiplied alpha, let me show you. If you have it set to default, it will just disappear because it's removing the information about the additive layer. The effect ends up looking like this. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry if I'm rambling a lot. I'm like three beers in on Tuesday night. I'm tired. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comment below or feel free to send me a message on coffee. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day or night. <laughs> Bye.